This is a new tool that's been developed and it's a, it's a fully fledged CAD system, but it exists in the cloud like everything else does. Okay? So I've now got guys in Melbourne, you know, I've got guys that are in, you know, you know, in quarantine or whatever and that sort of thing, working from home or self-isolating. This COVID thing hasn't affected us from a design perspective because we could quite quickly just get up and leave the office yeah. for, for what those guys needed to do. Okay, um, so the guys down in Melbourne, we actually packed up our Melbourne office and everybody just went home. We were on month by month on our lease, so we just exited and we haven't noticed any difference in Sydney as far as that team is. So you have offices here in Melbourne? Here in Melbourne. So we take those digital files out and then we bring them into a, um, like a production programming suite of programming machines downstairs and we digitally prototype it. So if you want to bring out one of those parts, for instance, on the rake yeah. press, so we're virtually going through the stages that an operator is going to use in front of a machine. It then goes to an unformed pattern yeah. in the blank yeah. hammer. Yeah. We can then send it to either punch or the laser. Yes. And then that'll just laser cut it and that basically assigns it. Do you guys use 3D printers at all to the prototype stuff? Or? We do a little bit of 3D printing. The printers themselves are moving so fast in, as far as business, you know, as far as the technology goes yeah. in them. Been following it very closely. You know, we, we use it for a prototyping perspective. The problem with 3D printing, um, everybody falls in love with it. It's very, very hard to use in a really good production environment. What we can prototype in in metal in a day using this technology gives yeah. us something real, gives us something that actually goes into an environment and it's a lot faster than what you can actually do on a 3D oh, printer. Really? So what it does is it takes out a tooling process. It's, it's replicating a plastic part that would normally take you four to five to six weeks all the way up to 12 weeks to actually get that tool, tool made yeah. to get tooled up. We don't actually need to change any of our tooling processes. When we're doing those processes, this is where like, I'm trying to encourage a lot of people to think about, doesn't need to be something ultra smart, that's the product that we're doing at the end of the day, it needs to be ultra smart ways of thinking about making everyday product that people are using. Yeah. Um, Whenever we talk about innovation, people always think, oh, quantum computing. And I always say, no, it can just be welding better. Yes, welding better, folding better, you know, um, putting stuff together better, thinking about like bending material, better. bending, material utilization, yeah. you know, having a conversation with a client that if the thing's 20 mil shorter, we get better material, yield out of the whole thing, saves the whole process, less yeah. scrap. This runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So you have someone on site the whole time? Doesn't need it. So um, we left here at 11.30 last night. The machine ran all night. The guys came in here at five o'clock this morning, was still just going. So we can load eight ton of material in there. It's got three material shelves and three part shelves and it just constantly runs. The guys come in the next morning. So we have a team of guys that are then picking the components that leaves a skeleton, packing the parts, ready to go. And what do you do with those off cuts? So that gets picked up by a scrap merchant uh, every day. And do they recycle? They or? recycle. So it goes down to Associated Scrap Metal, who's in Brookvale. Brookvale, you know, they get all, keep all of the steel together. We separate our steels, our stainlesses, our aluminiums, so that it can all go off. That's steel, I should. That's steel, yes. And what grade is it? So this is a, a 250 grade with a zinc coating. Oh, so okay. that's why it's that grey colour. Um, so the zinc stops it from oxidising and it also enables the powder coat a better surface to actually stick to. So no acid bath? No acid bath. So, you'll, so I don't have, so I do a lot of powder coating here, I don't have any acid baths. To find really motivated, really qualified TIG welders, it's really hard, you know, it's, it's a thing where you've got to hunch over a table, you've got to sort of focus on it really hard. Yep. and you get a sore back by the end of the day, okay? So what we've done is we've actually gone out and got this robot behind you, right. okay? And we're teaching it to TIG weld. So we've actually made this, we're in the process of making the jig, we've got the torch holders, all of the components basically. That's coming. a robot. That's a robot. So this is a collaborative robot. Can, tell, can I tell you, this is making me so excited. Because I used to do this in China. Yeah. And there's nothing. Like five years ago, there was nothing like that. No. Um, and, and the idea is this about... German or...? Uh, yes, I think... I th oh, no, I think... No, I think this is actually US. US, is it? Yeah. So, um, 
But what these guys have done here is, is they've come up with a, a robot that's it's a collaborative environment. So you're not going away and writing a whole heap of code. What you're doing is you're actually grabbing the thing and manipulating it, moving it into the right position and teaching it. Machine learning. Machine learning. Yeah. yeah, so you're teaching it what you want it to do so it then just replicates yes. your same process. Mark so the, this day, we all thought it was fun and then Skynet took over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
we've done multiple projects really quickly in Woolworths. Like we're very proud and I tell all of the guys here that you interface with every single person that lives in Australia. Because yeah. everybody will go into a Woolworths at some point in their life. Yeah. And the little bracket that you scan your awards card when you're in Woolworths, we did 18,000 of them for Woolworths. They're on every checkout, in every dispenser, every Woolworths, BWS, Caltex, you know, they're everywhere. Um, so, you know, and we hammer that. You know, Woolworths every so often comes to us and says, do you, um, you know, do you have a supplier that you work with in Asia? And we're like, we don't need to. You know, you tell us if there's a problem with the price and we'll figure out what we need to basically do. And they just keep coming back and coming back and coming back. Um, whilst we're doing that, you know, it's, it's also enabled us to help another, like we've got enough volume going through this business now that we can be extremely competitive to help smaller people grow their business as well. So there's a couple of little digital companies, a company called InTouch that's down in Brookvale. You know, we're bringing all their production in-house, we're doing it. They procure a, a special touch screen from overseas, they then bring it into Australia and we build digital kiosks for them, like the, the dumb bit that sits below it. Um, and, and they love it because they'll have someone that wants an FPOS bracket or someone wants to integrate a an, you know, biometric scanner in or someone wants to do something else. And we can tweak it and change it and adjust it and change its colour and those sorts of things on an order by order basis, which is helping them win work. Um, yeah. So. Freaking impressive. <laughs> no, seriously. So, I mean, um, um, like what you're doing here. I mean, manufacturing in Australia, we don't have like a deep culture of it. Like when you go to Germany, everyone's sort of doing it and they're all sort of integrating and borrowing. You wouldn't have that here in Australia. No, so, it, you know. It's funny because like that, like... I got into that mentality sort of very early in, in you know, we should be able to do this here, yeah. you know. Um, it's taken me eight years to get the business, you know, really sustainable and really motoring. Like the first six years were really hard, you know, nearly crashed it, like, you know, nearly went under, you know, went through the whole thing multiple times, like coming to this site too early. Like I needed to get out of a site that was too small, get into a place that was big enough to get efficiencies in the business. Yeah. Um, but the struggle of actually doing that and getting across yeah. the line. Um, you know, I find it, you know, we are doing manufacturing in Australia and it's actually very hard for us to talk to the Australian government about how we get incentives to help us do what we do because of how fast we move. Like we can't have a conversation around, you know, we wanna, we wanna do this exercise and we wanna land a machine in six months. I'm like, we've got stuff like COVID that have just hit. We've got people that need products. We needed to land machines today. There's stuff sitting in stock in warehouse. How do we get it out of the warehouses and into factories to start actually doing work? It's a good point. Government's a problem, really, isn't it? And, we move so slowly. And through this whole COVID stuff, like we haven't, you know, we obviously got the $50,000 that everybody got as far as business is concerned. Yeah. Um, we've actually struggled to get people to come and work for us because they're on JobKeeper and they're in risk of losing the JobKeeper if they come and do a day's work for us. So it's actually created a bottleneck for us in trying to get staff on board. What about job seeking, getting people? <sighs> we haven't gone too much into how that that works um, you know we've just been you know concentrating and knuckling into actually getting stuff out the door and doing that but we've we've nearly doubled the amount of staff working in this facility in the past six months um, and and that's just on a on a growth projection as we basically go through um, we had a you know, I'll go back to Woolworths, but we sat down with the team from Dan Murphy's yesterday. They've got a new concept that they're doing around a whole new store, look, feel, message that they're doing. We're going to be right at the front end of that and basically going through um, so that they will do their standard fixtures and fittings, will come out of their, you know, global supply chain. Um, but then all of the custom new look and feel, you know, ways that they want to get efficiencies and, and better things you know, in their stores um, and sort of hero the experience uh, and even start to have conversations with them about what COVID is going to be in an everyday store as they start to refit the stores and thinking about social distancing screens, thinking about sanitizers and how it integrates into how people are entering and exit.
exiting the facility. Like they're the conversations that we're now being part of and they're coming to us because we can help them achieve the value that they need. Like everybody wants it faster and everybody wants it cheaper. You know, being involved in that conversation, we can run a profitable growing business supporting people in that process. up here we consolidated and we're starting to share and leverage resources so the marketing team's about to come in and help us sort of communicate everything that I've said down there to everybody that we can do it okay. um, it's not about driving business for us it's about motivating other people that they can do the same thing like we're busy enough what we want to do is get everybody out there that's sort of going to mm, so just go out and have a crack, crack yeah. mate Thank, Thank you. you very much for coming. Thank you for having us. Cool. Nice to meet you all. Thank, Thank you very you much for coming out. In a few weeks, I think. Yep. Just Sounds good. Robot in work. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. Cheers. Thank you.